Okay, so hopefully you're seeing that okay. And this is taken from, I think it's the 2017 exam. Um, and it's a question, um, it, it, it's one of the questions associated with um, offset currents and offset voltages and all that good stuff. So what we have here, if I can get my uh, little, little spotlight thing going. Ah, there we go. So we're given a circuit here. And in all of these um, questions that I tend to set, you'll always get some sort of um, description of what the circuit does and um, what the application is. Because um, I think it's important that you as, in, as, as young engineers appreciate that the circuit is not just a problem to be solved. The circuit exists to solve a problem. So we have figure one here. It shows a mixer circuit um, and it sums the voltages applied at the input voltage VN1 and the input voltage VN2 to appear at the output V out. The signals are generated in this instance from two identical hydrophones, which are special microphones you can put underneath water. And the system is used to listen to marine mammals during migration. So it takes this voltage here um, into this um, resistor and this voltage here into this resistor. And if we look at the circuit here, first of all, we should try to recognize what the circuit is. Um, we know that Rx is a resistor that we're probably going to be asked to calculate what the value is. So let's ignore Rx for the time being. The non-inverting input is connected to ground. Um, so that's suggesting that this is probably an inverting amplifier. And yes, we've got a feedback resistor between the output and the inverting input suggesting this is an inverting am uh, amplifier. So any voltage that appears in this node here is going to appear at this node here. If we have a perfect amplifier, then we would have zero volts here, zero volts here, zero volts, whoops, here. And so the voltage from V in would um, flow through R into a node that's a virtual earth, which is zero. So you get Vn divided by R flowing through this resistor. And you get Vn1 divided by R flowing through this resistor. So you have two currents flowing through here. And that would add together and would generate a voltage across RF, which would appear at the output. So in principle, that seems to do what it suggests. The signals are generated from two identical hydrophones and it mixes the signals together and it appears at the output. Let's look at the questions we've been given. The first part is to redraw the circuit um, showing all sources of DC error due to the op amp. <laughs> right, so first of all, um, I will draw out the um, original schematic um, just for reference. Okay, um, I think I've got that right. Uh, and that is R, and that is R, and that is RF. Um, GTAs, can you read my writing okay there? <coughs> yes, I think he's clear. Okay, good, okay. Um, obviously, I can read my writing, but my writing is not always the most beautiful writing. So the first part of the question asked us to redraw the circuit shown in Q1 as showing all sources of DC error due to the op amp. So I have redrawn the circuit and here I've placed the offset voltage. Um, it doesn't matter which side um, plus or minus goes on, but I'll define it there. And also we've got um, some bias current from one. We've got
bias current from the two. And we have between the two nodes here, um, we've got um, iOS upon two. When you're drawing this diagram, make sure you show the arrows and the bias currents should generally flow in the same direction. So they're flowing out of the, the inputs in that direction and flowing down the bias currents here. And same for this one here. And the offset current, it doesn't matter which way you place this arrow, but you should place the arrow. You'll lose marks if you don't. Um, and that is the answer to um, part E. Okay. And that will give you 10 marks. I think you'd all agree that that's pretty easy 10 marks. Now, the second part of the question goes on and says, hence, derive an expression for the, oops, I forgot to label that. Um, please make sure you label all your components on your diagrams um, and make sure they are clearly drawn. Um, one point you should note, um, please do not use um, um, colored pens or, or do not refer to color pens because I may not get um, a color copy of the scanned papers. So when you say something like, and look at the red arrow, I don't know where the red arrow is. So when you're doing these things, remember that I may not get them in color. So um, just be a little careful with that. And particularly when you do nice graphs, I'll do a little graph here as an example. And you've got, you know, I1, I2, I3, and you can say, oh, well, it's obvious that I3 is much larger than I1. Just remember that that's what I see when I see your exam paper. So, um, um, it's a minor point, um, but please, um, if you can remember to do that, that helps um, when we're marking the exams. Okay, so the part, so that's part A. 